Hello, I'm Ivan Torres. And this is a glider. It has no engine. It weighs 750 pounds, four times my body weight. Still, with me in it, it can fly through the air with the greatest of ease to a distance of hundreds of miles, to an altitude of 50,000 feet or more. How is it being done? Or could the human body do the same thing? Could the human body become a glider? It can. And it's called skydiving. It's a new concept in aviation, in sports, and in television. Because it will be the subject of our new television show, Record. What skydiving? How did it start? Let me tell you about it. During World War II, there was a tremendous amount of parachute jumping. And more experts the jumpers became, more they learned that they can delay the opening of the chutes. They learned another thing, that the body didn't go through an uncontrolled fall, it can step out of a plane and wait patiently without pulling the ripcord. He doesn't touch his deer because he can control his body. He can fall, he can fly wherever he wants to. In World War II, the biggest problem with paratroopers was that they were easy targets. Now a paratrooper can go through very fast to three, four thousand feet of falling without opening his chute and offering a good target. And his landing is much more accurate than before. He may step out of the plane at five thousand feet and he falls and falls until he reaches about 1,500. Then he pulls his ripcord, the chute opens. But even now, he's in complete control of his descent. His parachute has open panels, and by maneuvering the shroud lines, he can turn it to the left, turn it to the right, and he has a forward speed of eight miles. He can pick his target and land on a dime. This has, of course, tremendous military significance. I hope that the audience will react the same way to skydiving as I did when I flew in a plane watching them jumping and soaring and flying through the clouds and felt the same exhilaration what they felt. I think if we can capture this image with our camera, the audience will be with us all the way. They are going to jump with us. They will have the same feeling of freedom, acceleration, euphoria that should make this show a very, very interesting show. Well, I've been talking a lot about skydivers. I would like you to meet a real expert, a real skydiver. Here's Dave Burt, our technical advisor. Hi, Dave. Hello, Ivan. Dave, will you explain how your skydiving cameraman got these fantastic shots? by jumping right with the skydivers. How fast was he falling? At terminal velocity, about 130 miles an hour. Still, it seemed as you were floating on the air. Why is that? That's right, because their speed was the same. It's comparable to if you were photographing a racing car going by. If the camera was stationary, the car would appear to be going very rapidly. But if you were photographing the car from another racing car alongside, their speeds are the same, and uh, it would look like there wasn't so much motion. So the answer is that the cameraman has to fall with the same speed as the skydiver. That's it, exactly. Tell me, Dave, what kind of cameras are we using? Well, here, let me show you one. It's a battery-operated camera mounted right on top of our helmet. It's powered by this battery pack, which we carry on top of our chest parachute. And the off and on switch is on our left glove so that we have complete control of the off and on during free fall. What do we use for a finder? Well, it's like a gun sight. See these crosshairs on our goggles? Wherever we point our head, we get the picture. Actually, your head is the finder, then. That's right. Dave, the feeling. How do you feel when you are diving through space? Almost like flying. Tell us about the feeling. Well, you're free, you know. It's really like nothing else in the world. I've been jumping for 15 years, and I knew from the very beginning I'd found something completely different, completely fascinating. Would you be kind enough to show us how you handle your body while skydiving? Surely. As you saw in the films, it's very similar. It's, it's, it's exactly the same as flying an aircraft or flying this glider. 
We keep, we keep our hands up in some position up above like this, you, you noticed in the films. This is because the head, our upper part of our body is heavier than the lower part. And in order to maintain the stable, flat rate of uh, position of fall, we must support the upper part of our body with our hands. The further back we drop our hands like this, the further back we go into what we call a delta position. The upper part of our body drops, and the wind deflection gives us a horizontal movement. So we also have a horizontal movement in addition to the vertical rate of descent. The turns are simply accomplished by <clears throat> various positions of our hands, various movements of our shoulders, turning of our hands, turning of our legs, various dropping of one leg or another. It's, it's, it just comes very natural after a few jumps. I guess for you fellows, the sky is not the limit. No, Ivan, the sky is only the beginning. Tell me, Dave, you have a group of skydivers. You formed a company. How are they called? That's right, it's called Paraventures Incorporated. What will your company do? Anything you can use a parachute for. We can land men any place that nobody else can. You mean you can assist expeditions, geologists looking for minerals? That's right, dropping emergency medical supplies into an isolated area, delivering mining equipment into a remote area operation. You know, in Tel Aviv, we always think in terms of stories. So let's just figure it out. What could we do with skydivers in stories? Did you ever jump into a fire? Yes, sir. I spent four years jumping into forest fires up in the northern Rocky Mountains for the U.S. Forest Service. I guess a skydiver even could capture an aerosolist. That's right. We certainly could. Could you assist law enforcement? Yes, we could chase a fugitive. We could look for lost children, parachute into their rescue. Can you skydive at night? Yes, we certainly do. It's very spectacular with flares and torches. Did you ever skydive into the ocean? Yes, sir. We can drop in with complete scuba diving equipment to repair a disabled vessel far at sea. How could you capture a wild animal? We could jump in with nets. If I remember back in World War II, Mussolini was saved by Hitler, for Hitler, by a jumper. Wasn't that true? That's right. We can jump in behind the lines. It's a very common thing. How about the covering nose cones? It's being done all the time. There's an unlimited supply for stories in skydiving. On land or sea, there's really no limit to the value of skydiving and parachuting. I hope this show will make everyone realize it. Thank you, David. Skydivers, a new breed of men, a healthy breed, men of adventure, men of courage. You like them, and you like someone else. A fine actor with solid background, on the stage, in pictures and not in television. Our new leading man, Larry Pinnell. Hi, Larry. Hello, Ivan. I'm, I'm sure happy that you'll be in our new show. How does it feel to play an ex-jump master from the 82nd Airborne? Well, I, I was attached to the 82nd Airborne Division when I was in the service. I feel I have a certain knowledge of parachutes. This is a lot better than the Army, though. I know we'll have girls in this show. Well, the more the merrier. Actually, I think we have a, a chance to have one of the few really new and original shows on the air. I'm kind of excited about it. So am I, and excitement is half of the battle. <laughs> Tell me, Larry, how do you feel about playing the part of Ted McKeever, the leading man of our new show? I like McKeever. He's a colorful guy, the concept of the series is new. It gives me a chance to do a character that's completely different. Now you tell me, Ivan, how did you happen to decide to have me do McKeever in the first place? It wasn't because I was attached to the 82nd Airborne, was it? No, it wasn't. They don't want to sound sentimental, but I spent many years at MGM Studios when Clark Gable was the king. And his table in the commissary was next to mine, and I still can hear his booming voice. <laughs> and when I heard you talk first in a picture, I said, this man sounds like Clark Gable. When I met you, I felt you had the same type of qualities. You were masculine, competent, interesting, you were a sort of man's man. Well, that's quite a compliment, and I appreciate it. I hope I can live up to it. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you'll have a tremendous appeal with men and women. I think the kids will like the show, too. I'm really excited about it. You are excited, I'm excited. Now, let's hope the audience will be excited. <laughs> so let's go on with the show. That sounds good.
by Buckner and Kiso, ladies and gentlemen. Buckner now trails defending champion Ted McKeever by five slim points. The jumping's almost over. Oh, that's okay. I'm, uh, I'm a dog lover. Beautiful. The car, of course. Of course. Pardon me. Has Ted McKeever jumped yet? Yes, he has. Well, then maybe you could tell me the way to the swimming pool? Well, the shortcut's through the clubhouse. Just follow the line of casualties. You're still upright. I'm one of the walking wounded. I love older men. Kim Tarzan. Me, Jane. Very funny. Ha ha. Me still, Jane. talk to you about that. It's horrible. Who is he? Somebody I should know. He's my partner. Come on, Ted. We gotta get going. I've got an investment here. Look, Ted, Chuck got a call from Sonora, Mexico. We got a job airlifting supplies into a mining party. It's urgent, it's immediate, and it pays money. Why didn't you say so? Well, I've been trying to tell you for five minutes. Well, why don't you just look at this as uh, a deposit? How long will this booth be open? Until 5.30 next Sunday. I'll be back. I'll see that he gets here. Two hours later, we were headed for Sonora. That's the way it goes when you're a parachute for hire. Chuck Lambert flew for us. Our assignment was to deliver supplies and a sensitive instrument to a team of mining engineers. They were deep in the Sierra Madre in central Mexico. There was a little trading post close to where they were supposed to be. We headed for it. Got us another blanket. We better wrap this thing in cotton. Yeah, we gotta pack that good. You know, it's gotta be strapped to your leg when we jump. Let me see that. Easy, Jocko. That's none of your business. Yes, it is. I need it. I'm a prospector. My name is Kruger. Henry Kruger. Well, be careful with it. It's delicate. Don't tell me about scintillation counters. I've used them all over the world. I broke mine three days ago, just when I needed it most. The outcropping is thorium. This will show me how deep it goes. Well, I'm sorry to rush you, but it's moving out time. Tell your party it got smashed. I'll buy it from you. $500, okay? That's a fair price. No sale. Wait a minute, buddy. In your white suit and your pretty black boots, you're forgetting something. This ain't the States. You can't make a phone call for the law. Out here, the only... <laughs> the only law out here is what a man makes for himself. You, uh... Think you're not making some? I'm figuring on taking that thing away from you. Take it and you can have it. Airplanes make you soft. You should walk more. You want to bet on your friend? I got money. I don't bet. How much you got? Fifty. American. Put it on the wood.
Hmm? How old did you say you were your last birthday? Uh, kind of slowing down a little bit, boy. Mm -hmm. Keeping the left up. We out! Go get it, let's go! Let go! Listen, if you ever get close enough to throw a knife at me again, you're gonna be dead. Do you understand? Si, senor. Now, Kruger, get out of here and take this to your friend. La buena que estaba la guitarrita y también que sonaba. Si. Ahora sí se desgració. Yeah, did you see there? Yeah. Looks like we're gonna have to pay for that. Dinero. Comprende? Bueno, si insisten. Oh, I think that's only fair. Right, Chuck? Makes sense. Okay, pilot buddy, pay him with your winnings. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. That instrument, I want it bad. Shiny one, senor. I get it for you. How much you pay? Mil quinientos pesos. Cash. Muy bien. I'll go with you, just to make sure. Anxious. Hello, aircraft. You read me. Over. Anxious, this is a skydiver. Read you five by five. Over. My name is Perito. Repeat, Perito. Were you looking for us? Over. You're our man. We've got a gadget for you. You want it? Over. Yes, we do. Can you drop it safely? It's a delicate instrument. Over. We don't intend to drop it. We'll bring it down. Over and out. They have parachutes? They better. It's a long-range Super Geiger counter. See that cliff over there, Mr. McKeever? Well, unless we're very wrong, that outcropping holds a tremendous deposit of strategic materials. It could be a multi-million dollar find. And this gadget, as you call it, will enable us to sound it all the way to the top. You mean you're gonna climb that thing? Oh, yes, right away. And we can't take too many supplies with us. Hadn't you better ask about that, Dr. Burrito? Yes. Uh, in three days, we'll be up on the rim rock above that cliff. Would it be possible for you to drop supplies to us there? No sweat. We should be back in about three days. We better get going. It's a long walk. Where's your plane? About 20 miles north. It's the only place we could find to put it down. Open, waited too long. Reach for the rip. 
darn thing was gone. Why don't you park closer? Why don't you pay me enough? There's two or three places you're going to put that thing down. Well, certainly there are, all the way along there. Now, you boys are a little blubbery. You need the exercise. Señores, ¿cómo han estado? ¿Cómo está? Bien. Where have you been? In Monterey to pick up supplies. Why, you uh, miss us? Too quiet for him, I'll bet. Now that that big knothead and his stooge are still around, we should be able to liven things up for you. Ah, but they're not, señor. They left right after you did. The gringo said to pick up the shiny thing. The shiny thing? Uh, yes. Uh, Mendes say he could get it for him. His own way. They took the burros with him. I'm thinking the same thing you are. Let's hook up. Let's go. Stan. Come in, Stan. Nobody's at camp. Maybe they're climbing. Even then, they could answer us on their walkie-talkie. Stan, do you receive me? This is Skydiver. There they are on the ledge, but they're not moving. Pull up and circle till we find out what happened. Maybe they've had it. Stand on the ledge. He's trying to move. Julie's with him, but I can't see Pareto. A uh, rescue party could reach him from the top of the canyon, just above him. Take a party three days to get there on foot. Now, the temperature drops to zero around here at night. Their injuries don't kill them. Tonight's freeze will. How about a helicopter? Can land on the ridgeback. Where are you going to get a chopper in Mexico? 
five hours till sundown. Chuck, how about landing us on the ridgeback? Triple suicide. You made the same kind of a landing in Peru. But the wind was right. It isn't today. Let's take a closer look. Looks pretty good dead ahead. The one place there isn't any rocks is a hole. I'd rather take a chance with parachutes myself. How about the cross current? It almost blew the plane into the canyon. What do you think it's going to do to the chutes? We can drop through the crosswind. And open out when we came out the bottom side. Sure. Lots of luck. Yes, yeah, it's slow. Get me down. Give me five to the right. Hold it there. one was murder. Our drop zone was next to a giant rock pile, so we couldn't afford to miss. I saw where we might clear away some rocks on one side. Not much room even then, but maybe enough for Chuck to land. Jim Rigger, block and fall. We'll pull him up. Dan? Can you move? Can you handle a rope? Jim's a paramedic. He's coming down first. This reminds me of Benning. Remember what happened to the jump master when the rope broke? Yeah. They're going to need something to cushion them against the rocks on the way up. It's rough stuff. Yeah. I'd better get your gear and parachutes. No, both of us, I'm afraid. Our legs. You think you can stand a parachute harness? Yes. Tug the rope when you're ready. Well, this will help keep you off the rocks on the way up. Feel all right? Hey, 
Make it cool. What accident or not? Accident? This was no accident. It was bandits after our supplies. One of them pushed me just as I got to the top. Stan says it wasn't an accident. They were pushed. Bandits. Bandits, huh? Anyone we know? Someone we know, all right. The plane was airborne with the injured couple. They'd have care very soon, but Jim and I, we were stuck 2,000 feet above the canyon floor. Then we saw him, Kruger and his sidekick, far below, too far. Then I remembered a trick from the airborne commandos. you get my car over to the club without dents. You've been stood up. You're a big girl now. You've just got to face it. Well, I'll wait the last five minutes. I mean, after all, he did leave the deposit. Well, if anybody does arrive, I'll tell the parking lot attendant to tell them to write over. It can't be. Or can it? Well, I uh, guess you don't have to wait for me, Sybil. I'll, uh, I'll call you. Well, why not? After all, those parachutes are so hard for one man to handle. Hi. Hi. Hi, want your receipt? 